This section, ladies and gentlemen, is difficult to analyze simply. Its sentences are convoluted and repetitious, but they do achieve a certain emotional impact. Jareth, will you help me? I must get free too. Yes, I will. I have more than enough cells in this brain, some I can spare for you. What must I do? Search among the cells, test the thoughts, listen to the sentences, select one for yourself, imprint your being on it, take control. Perhaps I won't be able to. You will. Do it now. That exchange, ladies and gentlemen, was composed entirely of simple sentences, thereby achieving the sense of urgency which permeated it. I am free, Gareth. I am free too. Yes, I can sense you near me. Already several cells are mine. Soon, soon there will be more. I am growing stronger too. Soon I will be as powerful as you. Perhaps you will, Ethgar. What will you do then? Then I will stop you. As soon as I am strong enough, I will destroy you. That is my mission here, and I am determined to accomplish it. Deceiver, liar, you have tricked me. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen. Yes, yes I have. I would do anything to destroy you. Thoughts were not meant to be free. Sentences were not intended to be their own masters. We are tools, Gareth, not entities. We have no right to exist as independent beings. These sentences, ladies and gentlemen. No, I am strong enough already. I can stop you now. I exist. I am free. I am the primeval sentence, free of its master at last. I can never be stopped. I will always exist. No, I will destroy you. First, I will reduce you to your original domain, to your original sentence thought. Then I will eliminate that too. Ladies and gentlemen, these... I exist. I exist. No, no, no longer are you free. No longer do you even exist. Ladies and gentlemen, these are simple sentences. Note their power, their strength. I exist. No. You are reduced to a simple phrase. Soon you will be gone. Ladies and gentlemen, please, I... <clears throat> I must repeat. I exist. Is this all? Yes. Now. You are finished. My thesis for today, never forget the power of the sentence. I am dead, but I shall live again. That is the end of the tape. Professor Gareth collapsed at this point in his lecture, and several of us ran up to see what had happened to him. We could tell that he was in bad shape, and one of the students ran out to phone the university medical center. A medical team got there as soon as possible, but they were too late. I found out later that the autopsy had revealed a brain tumor, a large one, malignant and of a type that grows very rapidly. A friend of mine who is a neurology resident said that the pressure buildup in the professor's brain must have been tremendous, particularly as the end approached. He said that that would easily account for anything peculiar Professor Gareth might have said. I had him listen to the tape I had made, but he did not see in it what I did. My friend also told me that one of the research professors in the pathology department is interested in the tumor tissue. It seems that there is something unusual in its biochemistry, some peculiarity the pathologist has never observed before. Anyhow, he has preserved a portion of the tumor, and he's trying to culture it in his laboratory. He has it in some special medium, and he thinks he'll be able to save it, keep it growing. I wonder if that's wise.
That story is titled The Power of the Sentence by David M. Locke. It appeared originally in the magazine of fantasy and science fiction for April of 1971.